Oh my god, I have some quarantine hair. Look at that. Ugh. All right, so uh, this is round 25. And, uh, I mean, if you watched the last video, you know I've been on a pretty hot streak. I think I've won six out of seven, and I checked the standings before I started this one, and I've shot up to sixth place. And um, I'm just a couple, uh, single game behind a couple other players. And somehow I pulled Jack Peters, who, while he's been having a really solid tournament, um, is a really low seed. So, you know, I'm in sixth place at the Nationals in Division One, and, and I pulled a, an opponent who's rated like 1,600 at the time. Now, no offense to Jack. I'm sure he's a player who's, who's on the upswing, and I think he ended up almost cashing at this tournament. So, um, you know, he, he's obviously still a solid player, but compared to, you know, like a Will Anderson or a Carl Johnson, I'm, I'm really lucking out with these pairings. Um... My first turn, uh, I go first, and my first rack is H-H-P-T-U-V-V, -V, which is just absolute garbage. You know, it's one of those games where you get to go first, but uh, you don't actually get to go first. Um, you almost have to exchange this one, but this is actually a pretty interesting exchange, um, because all the constants I have, save the V, have some interesting synergy together, right? You can feel P-H kind of feels pretty good together, H-T feels pretty good together, and then P-T also feels good together. So this is something I would encourage anybody watching to do if they want to try and get better you exchange on the first turn a lot in scrabble and if you do game analysis you start to see like quackle loves to exchange on the first turn um and, and you can always squeeze out another point or two on those first turn exchanges if you you know really analyze these turns closely and so i would just encourage you put in some random tiles and try and figure out what's the best possible lead here is ht the best here is h best here is hp best here should i just throw back all seven i know a lot of people are wont to just exchange seven on the first turn like oh look at the garbage i have to deal with but you can almost always salvage a, a you know a point or two by by keeping something better than nothing you know that that old school mentality of turn over the tiles and, and really reach for the blank that there's not too much merit to that. Um, so I would encourage you, I mean, I've done this for hours, just like put in a bunch of tiles and see what's better, ER or AER or AERN, you know, like, and, and this is a good example of a rack that'd be fun to do that. So Quackle actually recommends just by a smidge to keep HT here, which seems weird if you're like one of those people who always tries to keep bingo letters, but the H, you know, it's gonna stabilize pretty well with the T. Uh, I, I botched this one. I only held the T here, and you can see I'm giving up about a point to do that. So so bad job, me. I guess I need more practice on those exchange wrecks. Um, Jack comes back with Chow, and just a really important thing to know about Chow is it does not take a back S, so that's, that's important for the rest of the game. Um, I held my T and nothing else, and I end up pulling a bunch of L's, A-E-I-I-O-S-T. So... I really wish I had held that H now. Of course, hindsight's 2020, but um, a couple options to do here. I could consider exchanging again. Um, I could also play Chow. I could play AI over here. Or maybe I could do something a little bit longer, like Koti or Iota, if I, if I really want to. Um, you're not going to want to make a play of just like AI, o A E I O S T, just like almost never bingos. Um, I, well, that's that's a reasonable amount of, of letters that hit, but when you're looking at a, a leave, a six-tile leave, you, you want to think more about the vowels. Will any of the vowels hit? Because there's, you know, nine A's and 12 E's and whatever in a bag. And I'm going to miss on every vowel out of this pull. Even with eights, I'm going to miss almost all the eights. Um, so you don't want to leave A-E-I-O-S-T. Um, I got cute, and I, I really like doing stuff like this. Just, oh, you played that word? I'll play that word, too. You know, it's funny. It makes us laugh over the board. And I got excited about playing Chow. Uh, but this play here, AI, is a really solid play. Um, because, like I just said, Chow doesn't take an S. And, and basically, Jack is going to need an L to play underneath what I've done. You know, A-A-L or O-I-L or maybe a K. O-I-K is now a, a word, so a K would hit me pretty hard. But other than that, like, there's not opportunities for him to score, like, anything next turn. If you look at those details there, um, Jack's next turn, he's going to score, like, oh my god, 26 points after AI. And if I throw things down with Chow, he's going to score on average 38. So I'm giving him, like, 12 additional points. I do get to play off another vowel, which is nice. And, and I'm going to do a little bit better next turn. Let me try and move those details there for you. Um, you know, I'm going to do significantly better next turn, like two or three points, but 
wow, AI is just so, so sneakily defensive. And you can see quite well the, the difference in valuation between those plays is about 10 points. So that's a huge mistake on my part, just being cute, trying to play chow in response to his chow. But no, you can't do that, you know. You got to make the best tactical play. So big, big blunder on my part there. Um, luckily, I don't get burned too, too hard. He only comes down with MPs. So he has to you know, burn an ass and only gets 38 points. I guess he's got a bunch of eyes or something. Uh, just a fun aside real quick. Uh, MPs has a fun back H hook impish. So uh, there you go. Um, luckily, Chow ends up working out for me. E-E-I-L-O-S-T is, is my, my draw. And uh, there is a 7 in this rack, but Chow doesn't take an S, so it doesn't play. I do have the 8 petioles or pedioles, though. Uh, the 7, if you were wondering, is etoise. Is I think the French word for a star. Um, he comes back with baton, so again I'm getting pretty lucky. I'm opening up big spots. You know, put that S in a triple triple line, and he's only able to get 27 points out of it. You know, you think I might get hit a little bit harder here with an overlap play or something, and he just didn't seem to have it. So uh, I'm getting pretty lucky with what he's able to do uh, so far this game. Uh, and I pull A A D E G I S. And this is you know, a fun philosophical rack. Uh, there's a lot of decent plays that are all kind of the same. I think the standard move is probably just playing Aga right here. D-E-I-S is a reasonably solid lead. Um, fairly bingo prone. But if you look at this board, aside from bingoing here in the 15 row, um, either starting or ending with that S, really not a lot of bingo opportunity at all. Uh, again, Chow doesn't take the S, so not going to be able to hit sevens down here. The only thing you can put in front of that B is an A, so uh, really crappy board for bingoing. And so I'm, I'm more inclined to just try and get some points here. Um, I think bingo into that S becomes significantly harder because I've already got an S in hand too. Um, so what, what opportunity then can I use to score points? Well, Ideas scores a ton of points. It's a nice little five overlap. It also kind of mucks up this board, which I love to do. Um, Adagio is also a really cool play. ES is pretty solid, um, but it does throw the board way back open and, you know, makes bingos a possibility again. Now, Jack has just played five tiles. He's got probably a relatively close to random rack, um, and Adagio will play five tiles for me, and ES is a strong lead, but still put me kind of close to a, a random rack. So I've got to decide what kind of game do I want to make here. Do I want to make it like a closed game where I try and fish and, and hit a bingo when it opens up? Do I just want to throw the board open and see who's going to score more points long term? Or do I want to keep it kind of mucked up and closed? Um, one, one bad thing about ideas is whoever hits that bingo to the S in the 15 line is going to be at a huge advantage in this game. Um, so it kind of makes it a 50-50, but I also get 31 now, so, so maybe I don't need that bingo. You know, there are a lot of different considerations. I think if I could go back and do it again, I'd still play ideas. I like philosophically what this, what this play does, but at the end of the day, I think, you know, each of those... Each of these three are, are fairly defensible plays for, for one way or another. Anyway, idea is what I did. I always tend to play to score more points now and fewer later. A lot of other players prefer to invest in the future a little bit more than I do, but it's not what I do. Uh, A-A-E-E-G-G-Q is my next pull, so that's a, that's a weird rack. And basically it comes down to should I play Cade or should I play Gage? Um, and, and hold the possibility of Cade or see if I end up pulling something else as well. Um, and I think what I decided to do is because I was very confident on all of the back hooks of Gage, I knew that it took DRS, I decided to throw it out there um, because I think, you know, Jack is a, a new, newer player to the game and, and maybe he's not confident you can put that R there. So if I can create a small advantage for myself by knowing that hook, um, and being able to, to play it and maybe even pull a challenge, you know, that, that's, that's good to me. But, eh, you know, in hindsight, just because I'm saving Cade, like, that doesn't necessarily mean this is a good play. Um, the Q is such a clunky tile, and Gs are gross and disgusting, but, you know, I'm giving up 14 points. And, and, and Quackle has them pretty close, but Quackle does have Cade just slightly ahead. And, uh, yeah, like, looking back on this game a year later, Maybe, yeah, I don't know what I was thinking, actually, you know. Typically, I, I play the Q pretty quickly if I can. It's a, it's a terrible tile. Gs are gross. Gs are terrible tiles, too, but not nearly as, as terrible as a Q. So I'm a little bit shocked I didn't play the Q here. But I'm guessing I was thinking about those hooks on Gage, and I knew them, and I felt good about that. Uh, Jack comes back with OK, which is one of the hardest hitting plays you can have. That's not a bingo right now, but that's fine. 
Um, I pick up a U to go with my Q, which is a small miracle. Um, a A E N Q U Z is now what I've got. So this this is a really interesting turn too. Um, I do have Cade like I wanted, but I've got all these other possibilities as well. Uh, you can play the Z instead. Um, Azan over here holds the Q and the U together. Um, or, or I can shed the Q and keep the Z instead. I'm not going to be able to play off the Q and the Z at the same time, but that's fine. You know, closed board like this, probably not going to bingo anyway. Rather, just keep scoring a lot of points. Uh, with hindsight, I, I, I must have missed Azan. Uh, I know I have a tendency to get blind when the Q is on my rack and just think about getting rid of the Q. How do I get rid of the Q? Um, but Azan looks really solid. You know, that's 36 points. It knocks out a big hook on the board and closes the board again. Um, probably really decreases uh, Jack's chances of, of doing anything worthwhile next turn unless he's bingoing to that S. Um, and I, I didn't play it. I, I can't tell you now if it's because I didn't see it or if it's because I legitimately chose to play something else instead. Um, but you, you can see Azan's just a great play, according to Quackle. Um, and uh, it, it limits Jack's scoring better than any other options. It's, it's giving him, what, 35 a turn? The others are 38, 39. Um, and I still do pretty well next turn, but I'm also doing well this turn. And you can see Quag, because I'm holding a better leave, A, E, and Z, I score quite a bit next turn, and I think that's what I was thinking. I decided to play Quag here. But, uh, man, Azant looks really good. So another squandered opportunity. I'm just not playing Great Scrabble this game. Um, Jack comes back with Tux. I feel like, you know, if you look at Jack's average score on the next turn this game, like, he's been below it practically every move except maybe okay. So I'm very fortunate right now. I'm playing sloppy but getting away with it because my opponent's just not hitting anything. Um, A-E-I-M-N-R-Z is my pull. And uh, this turn is painful because there's a lot of good possibilities, but I think the best one by a lot is Raise right here. Uh, that's disgusting. And I am in doesn't look like a superb leave, but there's only two eyes left. And, and I'm a lot more inclined to hold an eye like this if I know I'm not, you know, at a huge risk to double or triple them up. Um, I love the play of raise in hindsight. I think I just saw mix and I'm like, ah, 35 and I don't have to think. Great, cool, mix, I'll play mix. Um, but raise looks so good. Uh, I would absolutely do that. Of course, you're never going to throw up and remix, you know, in a tight, close game with two unseen blanks. Like, that's just that's just suicide. But, man, I love Raze here. I, I'm mad at myself for not seeing that. And uh, Jack comes down with Stroyers, which anagrams to Roysters, which uh, I think he probably should have played if, if he were confident on the word. Uh, maybe he wasn't, but, you know, He's taking a big lead in this game, and you don't want to put that S in the corner because that allows me to come back down with the bingo here and, and get right back in it. Um, so maybe he didn't know Roysters, or maybe he just got, uh, jumped the gun and played too quickly, or, or maybe he had a tactical reason for doing that. I'm not really sure, but I was happy to see Stroyers. I mean, you're never happy to get bingoed on for 83 with a blank, but, you know, like, as, as far as it goes, I, I'm okay with, with that. Oh, wrong, wrong box. I draw A-E-N-P-R-R-Z. So once again, I have the really nice raise play over here, and once again, I don't play it. I'm, you know, I'm definitely thinking I didn't see that play, um, but, but pretty quickly, I just threw down raise right here. Um, ENPR is a decent leave, you know, relatively bingo prone. I don't really like it with this pool, only two A's, two I's, two O's, and a bunch of E's for me to hit instead. But uh, if you don't see raise and gauger over here, then, then I guess raise is the only other you know, reasonable play to make. Uh, Jack played co-ed. You know, that wasn't his full rack. I'm going to go ahead and just put in CD because I don't know what he had. But he plays co-ed over there. And uh, I draw B-D-E-E-N-P-R. And I see this rack and I'm like, this is either a ridiculous phony or it's a word. Um, and it's pre-bend. Pre-bend. And uh, I thought about it. And I thought about what my odds of winning this game are, if it's a word versus if it's not. And, and I just don't really see any good options for me except pre-bend. And I'm feeling like, you know, 50-50 maybe, like this might be a word, this might not. I, I, I feel like I've seen it before, but this could also just be an insane phony that I'm coming up with. But I have nothing else good. You know, I don't feel good about winning this game ever after Neb or Ben, really. I feel like he's going to block that S and then I'm just going to slowly lose. So you've got to take the shot here. 
and I do, and he holds, and he challenges, and it's good. And I, I just, the emotion, the raw emotion going through my head when I saw that challenge screen come up green, I was shocked. And, and frankly, I'm starting to think to myself, like, holy God, I, I'm going to be top five at nationals. I'm going to win this game, and I'm going to be in the top five at a nationals. Oh, my God. Now, you can't get ahead of yourself. You know, the, the game's still going on, but uh, he, he does lose a turn here. I'll go ahead and just put in pass. He's going to play those E's next turn. Um, and sure enough, not only do I win the challenge, but I pick up the, the last blank. And at this point, it's like, okay, my odds are, are real solid all of a sudden. Now I've just got to start playing whack-a-mole and, and blocking the lanes. Um, of course, I'm getting in my own head now. Ulva is, is clearly the play you want to make if you're going to knock stuff, stuff out. And for whatever reason, I just whiffed on it, and I played Aruv here instead for 14. Would much rather hold the R instead of the L, especially with two L's and only one R unseen. But, oh well, you know, I'm, I'm giddy. I'm on cloud nine right now. Um, he plays D down there for 14. I figured he wouldn't bingo back no matter what, because he wouldn't challenge pre-bend unless... If he had a bingo back, I, I don't think he challenged. I think he just bingo back. He's still in good shape. Um, e G H L N N blank is my pull now. Um, and yeah, I can just hold 31 here. So now it's even like, okay, well, if he does hit a bingo, like right there or something, I think I'm still going to outrun. I've got the blank. The odds that he's even going to bingo are pretty low. So just kind of coasting from here. Um, he plays a D over there for 13. Um, G J L N N W blank. So that's kind of gross. Maybe I should exchange here, but I figure if I can just score enough points, I can cash that J, win or if he bingos and still outrun him. So I just threw down Luger and I figured I'd be able to hit some word through any vowel he gives me. I'm up almost 100 now, so I think the game is mine. And, and Jack just keeps missing bingos anyway. Uh, he plays Pelf. B J N N O W blank. No, so seven in the bag. And I've got this little enjoin six tile play over here. So I figured, you know, even if he bingos to the E, this is putting me up by 112. Forget it. I'm going to win. And, and at this point, at this stage of a Nationals, I'm playing less for spread and more to just like lock up a win and, and take my spot in the top five. Because holy crap. So I, I think, you know, if I want to be greedy, I, I can play Jow or Jew and, and try and hit a bingo and like really run up spread. But in join, I just, I don't think I ever, ever lose after that. Really, I don't think I ever lose after any of these. But I'm just taking the win, you know, get this over with as fast as I can. And that's something I need to work on down the road, is being confident enough to continue playing for spread um, at, at any point. But but right now, like, game 25 of the Nationals, I'm on, like, table three or something. Like, I, I, just give me the W. That, that's all I'm thinking about right now. Um... F-I-R-T-T-U-W is my rack. So I, I botched this in game a little bit too. Um, you can see with Jack's unseen letters, it's I-O-V. There's really only one outplay he has. Well, two. There's Vial and Vial. As long as I block those, you know, he's not going out and I get an extra free turn. Um, but I really need to be thinking about ways I can block those and guarantee to go out in, a, in one next turn. And, and I wasn't able to find it. Uh, I didn't want to sit there forever and, and rack up spread. You know, um... But, but Quackle found a way to do it, and uh, you can play Furl, and you hold on to Twit, and uh, I, I guess Jack's not going to block, or he's going to give up so much that trying to block that he ends up sticking himself with the V or, or something like that. But I ended up not thinking this one through as much as I could have. I just played a Wilt to stop him from going out, and it held Frup, but then he ends up blocking that. So I play Wilt. And he plays Val, which blocks the out I set up for myself. And I'm not able to go out. And should have just plumped the F there, but I didn't see it. I just played Fro, and that's how this one ends. But, oh my god. You know, that pre-bend turn was just like a huge turning point. I was probably 20 or 30% to win the game, and then all of a sudden I'm 80% and I picked up the blank. You know, that was absolutely huge. And it was a Hail Mary of a play. Again, I felt in my gut like maybe it's a word, but I actually based it off of pre-bent, which is not a word. I thought it was like to bend beforehand. And I was thinking of pre-bind, which is good. But pre-bind is a verb, and pre-bend is a random noun, a clergyman's stipend, a prebend, or so, I, I don't know. So I, because I based it out of pre-bent and pre-bind, I'm thinking I just literally had no idea this was a word, and guessed and got super freaking lucky. 
but I will take whatever I can get at this point, you know. And uh, as, as it turns out, two people ahead of me lost, and this game puts me in fourth place in day four of a Nationals. So what what just happened? Anyway, um, there we go. That was game 25. Thanks for watching, guys.